Hey there, how you doing? This is my 3D printed hand creation. And I want to attach each of his fingers to an individual servo motor. And ideally want to control those motions using a glove. Uh, and in that glove have some flex sensors to actuate that action. So that started me on the search for flex sensors. And I don't know if you're watching this video, uh, you know that uh, flex sensors to purchase, they're kind of expensive. And uh, to do what I want to do would cost me too much. So I was researching how to make my own. And in the research, um, what you often hear about is uh, basically a a flex sensor DIY, which is a sandwich because flex sensors work on variable resistivity. So you've got two conductors on either side and then something sandwiched in between. And you read about duct tape with some magical anti-static bag that's black, that's carbon infused, which I can't find anywhere. So I thought, well, what else could we use? Um, in some of the literature, the videos, you see reference to people taking a pencil, which graphite, carbon based, and scribbling on two sides of a piece of paper to stand in for that semiconductive uh, medium. Uh, what I found when I was experimenting is that didn't work for me, but what I did find worked for me is a lighter gauge of paper. This is actually bedding off of, a, off of a doctor's table. Comes in a roll, but I'm sure any kind of lighter tissue paper would work. So what you do is you just pencil scribble two sides quite hard. And I guess what's happening is the little carbon particles are touching each other a little bit um, on each side. Not too much, kind of semi-permeable. And then you read about people using aluminum foil as the conductive piece. For myself, I used to do stained glass. And in stained glass, there is this magical stuff called copper foil. And copper foil is adhesive backed. And it, uh, it normally comes actually in quarter inch rolls, which is perfect for this application. I didn't have any of the rolls, but I did have some sheets and I just cut it down to size. Um, so, for those of you makers out there, you probably know what breadboard leads are. So my first iteration, I used a breadboard lead, soldered, repeated this twice. So I had two sides of the sandwich. Once I had the two sides of the sandwich with this nice adhesive back, I have a laminator. I'm not sure if you can see this, but it's just, they're pretty cheap. They almost give them away at Staples because it's all about the consumables. And I happen to have, um, what is this? Uh, recipe card sheets they're little pockets you could use any laminating size but this worked out well so what i did is i ran one of these guys just naked through the machine first so that i had a piece of plastic solid to work with solid but flexible and then took the adhesive backing off stuck it to just a sliver of this now the first ones are kind of wide bear with me had two of these guys, took my little piece of scribble paper, cut to a nice rectangle, threw it in between. And the trick to this is, when you look at this, you can see that middle sandwich, the graphite encrusted paper. You want that to be bigger than your copper strips or whatever medium you use on the outside. If you don't do that, you're going to have a dead short and it's not going to be a variable resistor. Now, once I had the two sides with my little sandwich, I shoved it all into 
the hot pocket, wires and all, and I ran it through the laminator. And so uh, don't worry about breaking your laminator. Um, the, the carriage will open up to accept it. And then I just trimmed it down to size once it was through the laminator and in the uh, more recent iterations I actually didn't use leads from a breadboard I used longer leads so uh, give me a little more room to play with and then you might be wondering what does this mean this 375 eyes are going I'm an old man 375 to 1023 Basically, when I hook this up to an Arduino, you want to check on what range it'll return. And each one is somewhat different. Some are more sensitive than others. You know, this is not an exact science. It's the nature of the beast. But by you taking your measurements and knowing how flexible, what range each individual flex sensor works in, you can tweak your program later to use that specific sensor. So the first guys worked kind of well. They're a bit big, a bit wide. So in my more recent version, I've gone a little narrower. I don't know how narrow you can go, but if you're looking for an alternative solution to making a flex sensor, this worked for me and I have it hooked into my breadboard and um, don't have it live right now but imagine this I bend that and my servo motors bend along with so this does work cheers